I, I grew up in a um, very depressed neighborhood uh, known as the bottom. What me and a gang of kids would do is like, we would take crowbars and go down by LSU, um, breaking newspaper machines, washing machines, you know. One day we coming out of one of the halls and um, there he was standing. Say, you know, you can't just be around here, the police will get you. Say, well, I tell you what, my name is Dale Brown. You go to school, get an education, look me up, I'll help you. Silky would not get an education. Instead, he would start a gang at the age of 13. During his life as a gangster, he created a rap sheet with 57 crimes. If you know about Silky Slim, you know that I earned mine the hard way in the streets. Gangster, head buster. I would wake up at, um, say, 8 o'clock in the morning, grab a fifth of vodka and turn it up. And I light up two or three sticks of PCP, take a snort of heroin, and I was ready for the day. One time I actually heard some, some, some noises, I heard some people, I said, somebody's coming to kill me. I put my bulletproof vest on, grabbed my gun, climbed up under the bed, I'm going to get them before they get me. Woke up the next morning, hit my head on the bed, I'm like, damn, this is hell. But Silky's life would continue to deteriorate, ultimately landing him at Angola State Penitentiary. And I'm like, man, I'm really in prison. And I started to pray to ask God to take me out of that. Silky would serve out his sentence and begin the difficult process of going home. Being a convicted felon, um, I knew that I couldn't come home and get a job because that's the way the system is. So nothing stopped me from coming home and creating my own type of situation. Silky Slim would begin speaking at schools and prisons across Louisiana, but he would spend most of his time back on the same streets where he grew up, warning about the dangers of gang life while still struggling to distance himself from it. It hurts my heart when I have to come to a funeral every week and see young black brothers being buried at the hands of an open enemy. I have to start reprogramming my brain, reprogramming myself to be a better person because I got 22 years of hatred, 22 years of being the scum of the earth that I have to get rid of. So how can I clean that up in just one day? Early in his new career, Silky would cross paths once again with Dale. Me and him were speaking at a prison, I and mean, he remembered me. Man. One of the things he said, he said, man, I want you to stop by my office. He didn't forget, and I knew he was sincere about sitting down, hearing my story, or talking to me, or whatever. And basically, he's become not one of my biggest, but my biggest supporter. Dale would later finance Silky's Stop the Killing van that has become the centerpiece of Silky's efforts in the community. It's like he goes out and looks for situations that need fixing, and he knows that there has to be something in place to help people to make it to the next level, else there wouldn't be any Dale Brown story. You look like Superman. What's your name? Sure got a nice smile.